Continuing our examination of selection, let's look at another situation here. We're going to look at the, a situation called um, overdominance. In overdominance, we're looking at a situation in which the heterozygote will have the highest fitness compared to the two homozygotes. So there are a number of examples of this that you may have heard of. Uh, sickle cell anemia is the one that's talked about the most, where the heterozygote is more healthy than either of the homozygotes. So this is our set of fitnesses. Let's start with our delta P equation and see where we, um, where we go from there. So first, let's just start by writing down our equation, which perhaps by now we're starting to have memorized. Or if not, we're realizing we probably should memorize because we're using it so often. So P, Q, W, bar. Plug these fitnesses in here. W11 is 1, minus W12, so that's minus that, plus Q, W12, minus that. This and this cancel, so we have a negative S. This and this cancel, so we have a positive S. So that gives us P, Q, W bar, minus S, P, plus S, Q. Remember, Q is really just 1 minus P kind of in disguise, so we can substitute that in there. So making that substitution gives us P, Q, W bar, negative S, P, plus S, minus S, P. So grouping these together, we have an S in all three of those, so that's S, P, Q, W bar. So that gives us negative P plus 1, negative P. So that's 1 minus 2P. And then remember this was delta P. So this is our equation for delta P. And instead of using this to predict next generation, things like this, what we'll do is look at this and notice that if P is equal to 0.5, this last term, we'd have 2 times 0.5 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. If P is equal to 0.5, delta P ends up being equal to 0. And so when this occurs, we say that P of 0 0.5 is an equilibrium frequency. And we refer to that special frequency with a little kind of carrot over the top of it. So the thing to notice about this overdominance situation is that if the heterozygote has the highest fitness, um, the delta P equation ends up turning into this form. And then with this equation, delta P is equal to 0 when P is 0.5. And that's an equilibrium. So if the frequency ever gets to 0 0.5, delta P of 0 means the frequency will stay at 0 0.5 indefinitely. We can think about um, how to solve for these equilibria, or how to find equilibria such as the one we just looked at. What we can do is we can set delta P equal to 0 and solve um, for the conditions. This is um, thinking about what we just did, but with an actual kind of approach. So delta P equals 0. Remember from before, we had S P Q over W bar. 1 minus 2 P is the equation we derived for the overdominance case. So when is this true? Well, it's true when S is equal to 0 this would be true, but that's not really that interesting. That's when there's no selection, right? If there's no fitness benefit to any of the genotypes. The other way in which this can be true, or the other two ways this can be true, is if P is equal to zero, or Q is equal to zero, right? Those terms could be equal to zero. That whole thing would be equal to zero. This also isn't quite so interesting. That's when there's no variation, right? If P is equal to zero, that means every individual is a lowercase a homozygote. If Q is equal to zero, that means every individual is a capital A homozygote. And then the only other way that this can be equal to zero is our fourth option, when 1 minus 2P is equal to zero, which gives us our equilibrium frequency of 1 half. 
this is um, an equilibrium frequency, right? so genetic variation that stays the same from generation to generation. And then the next question we want to think about this conceptually is whether this equilibrium um, is stable or unstable. Is this equilibrium stable or not? Um, kind of a metaphor to think about here is you could have a ball at the bottom of a little surface like this and it would kind of stay there. That's an equilibrium. Or you could have a ball perched at the top of a hill and it would stay there. That's an equilibrium. But they're kind of different, right? If this one is nudged or perturbed a little bit, um, it may move, but then it'll come back to where it started. This one, if it's nudged, it'll move. Then it'll keep going and it'll never come back to where it started. So this is like a stable equilibrium. Right? It's not changing and it's stable because it would go back to it. This one is an unstable equilibrium. If it's nudged by something, it would not go back to that. So our next question we'll be looking at is, when we have equations like this and we solve for our equilibria, and in particular our case of overdominance, this equilibrium frequency that we've derived here, is it a stable equilibrium or is it an unstable equilibrium? And we'll look at that next.